from San Francisco, California. This is the Rock and Roll Geek Show. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. <clears throat> okay. First time recording while I'm in the kayak. I don't know if this is going to work or not. I'm launching at Half Moon Bay, Pillar Point Harbor. I have four crab traps in my kayak. I'm just now getting to the jaws. The jaws are probably the most hairy at Half Moon Bay because you got a lot of party boats and weekend guys on their boats speeding in and out of the harbor. And they create a huge wake for kayaks and sometimes people get flipped over. To the left of me, there's a jetty with about, I'm gonna say about 300,000 seagulls and another 500 or so, maybe less, pelicans. There's some seals swimming around me. Mavericks is up there on the right, just on the other side of the right jetty. That's where there were 50 foot waves. And what you hear is that uh, foghorn. I'm coming on some party boat wake right now. I'm getting an early start. So I'm kind of beating most of the boats. The Hooli Cat just went past me. All right, I'm coming through the jaws. I have about, oh, by the way, I have a sabiki rig set up so that I can catch some anchovies while I'm out here killing time. All right, I'm just now exiting the jaws. Where I'm gonna, I have markers on my fish finder of where I put traps last. So I head out there, it's about uh, probably a half a mile, maybe a, two, a third of a mile or a half a mile past the jaws. Right now I'm in 29 feet of water. Where I'm gonna be dropping traps is about, about 40 feet. I can go anywhere from 30 to 40 feet. I have not been out here since the storms. I'm hoping the storms brought some crab. I'm trying to get crab for Christmas. There are seagulls everywhere, which means there's a lot of bait. I'm looking at the fish finder and there's tons of bait. And I should be dragging a sabiki rig, so I'm gonna do that right now. If I can stop getting these little sabiki hooks caught in my fingers little tiny hooks all right oh shit all right all right dragging sabiki behind me there's tons of bait i'm showing on the fish finder I'm hoping it's anchovies and not jack smelt. But jack smelt will probably make good ling bait too. I'm gonna fish after I drop the traps. I don't know if this is being heard or not. I don't really like talking while I'm in the kayak. Well, I just dropped my third trap and the line is hung up on my rudder and I can't get it out unless I jump in the water and I ain't jumping in the water. There's another guy on a kayak out here, Sean, he's supposed to be coming to help me but He's not here yet. So if you don't hear from me, nice knowing you, friends. Okay, update. Sean arrived. We cut the trap. 
line. We pulled the trap in, cut the line as close to either side of the trap and buoy and freed the trap from my kayak. I have a line dangling from my kayak now. I'm able to steer it. So, situation averted. Now when I get to shore, hopefully this rudder will still continue to work because it's working right now. When I get in, I'll untie it. But it was all knotted up. He wasn't able to get it unknotted. And I ain't jumping in the water and neither is he. Not in the ocean. So now I'm going to fish for a little while. Then I'll come back and check my traps. Okay, hello. Here I am, I'm back home. I hope you're enjoying this uh, day in the life of a guy on the kayak fishing. I'm now home, as you can tell, but I'm walking around cooking some food for the dogs while I'm gonna tell you the rest of the, my adventure. So I went fishing, <coughs> uh, was not really catching anything, but as I was fishing, um, I saw a boat going that was in the direct it looked like it was there was a boat on at my traps and I started getting really uh, worried that they were stealing crabs from my traps. So I stopped fishing, high-tailed it back to my traps. So the traps had been, uh, some of them had been, had been out for about 45 minutes before, or a good half hour before I uh, got tangled up in the crab line. So there were a couple of them that were soaking for probably about an hour and a half and then there were two that were maybe soaking for maybe 30 minutes so i paddled back i paddled back to where those traps were um, only two dungeness crabs were in in all four of those traps there was well there were a whole bunch of small ones and small females and the females have eggs, and you're allowed to keep females if they're big enough, but these were all undersized. And as a general rule, I don't like to keep the female anyway, unless I'm desperate because, you know, you want them to lay eggs and bring more crabs in. So anyway, I got two, tra two crabs, and I think I got one decent-sized rock crab as well. So then I went back and joined that guy, Sean, fishing for a while. We fished and we were just not biting. We were, we were seeing fish on the fish finder, but no fish were biting. So we fished for about eh, 45 minutes or so. And then it became like almost 11 o'clock and the wind was starting to pick up like a lot. It was starting to get windy. I mean, it's supposed to be storming tomorrow morning. So the storm is coming in. And uh, so we fished for a while. Then I went and checked my traps. We're gonna head in here. So I, I'm making a steak for the dogs. Yes, my dogs eat well. But I need to turn the steak. I chopped it up, and I need to turn it for them. So I went back to check to pull in the traps. We were gonna pull in and head head on in. Martina wanted to have lunch with me, and she wanted me to hurry up and get home. And also, Casey wanted some fish for uh, his. Christmas dinner, so I gave him some fish that I caught. And uh, anyway, so that's another story. But and so I went to check the traps. Check the first one. Uh, nothing. Like maybe two little tiny little crab. Check the next one. So I so I checked that trap. Wound up all the cords, you know, the buoy and all that and put it on the front of my kayak works right i store i usually store three traps in the front of the kayak and then one in the back of the kayak so i i checked the first two nothing in them i mean just nothing but small females and tons of females with eggs so none that were worth keeping and then the third one was full of crab only two of them were big enough. Uh, well, there was a rock crab, a decent sized rock crab, and then um, two really nice sized crabs. So that made four total Dungeness crab. And as I was pulling, as I was dealing with those crabs and 
I, I didn't, I looked up, where's my traps that I put on the front of my kayak? They were in the water, they fell in the water. And I'm thinking, uh-oh, I just lost two traps. I'm gonna sink to the bottom. Well, for some reason, they floated. <laughs> so, by the grace of God, I managed to um, retrieve those two traps. And then I got those traps in. So then I had three traps, I had one more trap to, to check. So that I had so a total of four crabs and two rock crabs, and I had one more crab to tr one more trap to check. Wound that third one up and put it on the back of the kayak because that was a on the box when I put it. it the three in the front are are crab ring or are, are crab rings, and the one in the back that I put in the back is like a um, square box trap. Anyway, so. I put the third one on the back of the kayak and all that, and um, I go to check the last trap, and it had two more nice ones and a bunch of small females. So I ended up with six Dungeness crab and two decent rock crabs. So I got enough for Christmas dinner, which is real what I really wanted, all I really needed. I mean, I would like to have had a few more so that Martina could have, my daughter could have taken some to um, where she's going on Christmas. So it was all in all, it was a good day. As I was heading in, Martina was texting me, I will hurry up and get in. We're going to go have lunch. So I'm rushing to get in, okay? So I finally, I get in about 45 minutes later, and I forget, I I pull the thing up on the, the uh, shore, and I'm so, man, this thing is hard to pull on. I forgot to remove the pedal drive from the kayak as I was dragging it on the shore, and I'm thinking, oh, no, this thing was 800 and the drive by itself cost $800. So I'm thinking, oh, God, what else can go wrong? So I pulled the kayak back in the water, lifted it up, put a, and pulled the drive out. It doesn't look like there's any damage to it. I hope to, hope to God that there's not. So I'm having a rough, this is like, yesterday was such a great day. And that's, that's how the fish gods uh, treat you. You have a great day fishing one day, then the next day, everything goes wrong and you become humbled because you get a little cocky thinking you're a good fisherman and then the next day you do stupid crap and it brings you back down to earth so fortunately that drive wasn't messed up so i i put everything i'm thanking god about that i put the kayak on its wheels there's because there, i have this cart with these big huge wheels where you can drag it over the beach strap it in i'm dragging the thing up the hill Boom, the thing turns over, flips on its side. The, tr the crabs fall out of the, out of the cooler that I had. Uh, the fishing poles all fall off. Everything tumbles into the dirt. People are looking at me laughing. <clears throat> so about 30 minutes later, I get all that back situated and I finally get everything back on the truck. So all in all, a very tough tough way to get six crabs for Christmas dinner, but I did it, and I'm back home, and I made it. I don't know what I would have done if there was not another kayaker out there with me. I don't know how I would have gotten that trap off of, off of dangling on my kayak. I, would have, I don't know what I would have done. I might have had to call the Coast Guard again, but thank God. That's a lesson, friends. Don't go out alone, which I did. And I probably will again because I, I don't have any brains. But. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this, friends. Tomorrow's my birthday. Looking forward to relaxing at home and maybe cooking and seeing what else happens. I don't know what I'm going to do a show on tomorrow, but i got two more days left of these dog days of Advent. Hope, you're, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening, friends. I'm going to close out with... A Christmas song, a song by American Heartbreak. Well, it's actually a song I wrote originally in my band, The Flex Priests, but we did it. In a, we recorded it in American Heartbreak too. Uh, the greatest Christmas song ever written is what it's called. Somebody told me the other day that they listened to it and thought that it should real. Oh, there's a the dog. Thought that it would be a great song for a soundtrack, for like a Christmas movie soundtrack. And I will not argue with that. If anybody out there has any uh, connections or 
in movie music placement. Help me out, friends. All right, this is American Heartbreak, greatest Christmas song ever written. Have a great day before the day before Christmas. I will talk to you tomorrow, friends. It's a rock and roll geek train wreck.